What's up, guys? I'm Alex. I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys, and we are back with another video talking about our arm wrestling kata. Uh, hopefully, you've seen the video. If you haven't, we'll throw a card up in the window. Let's hope you remember. Yeah, let's hope you remember. If not, yeah, we will. We're going to remember this time. <laughs> so anyway, card up in the window about the arm wrestling kata, which is basically uh, all the moves on the hill of arm wrestling techniques, and then just done in succession, down one side, down the other. Uh, and we like to do it, or we started doing it, just as a shadow boxing uh, routine. So we're just doing it alone by ourselves at a table. I'm doing it now like in between my sets at the gym because there's a table there. So like as I'm resting, I'll just walk up and run through the kata like that. You do it both arms. And the important thing is that you're really starting to uh, learn how these moves are executed so that you can start to execute them on the table, right? Um, so we want to show how we try to do that in practice as far as like how we try to utilize the kata that we've been practicing uh, to now do it sort of with each other, yeah, right? I think this is like this would be like the next level to learning the kata is actually doing it with another person. And you can still do it at an intensity that's good for both of you and where it's still uh, practice, right? You can do it at 20 to 30 percent where you're just initiating all the moves, learning how to initiate with perfection uh, while keeping all this the, call the right fundamentals intact mm -hmm. and really practicing you know, the entire hill from top to bottom, your opponent can do it back to you. And you can also feel what it's like to get be on the receiving end of all these different moves. Yeah. And what Alex just said about making sure that you have all the key fundamentals this is another thing as we've been, we've been teaching a lot of newcomers and really trying to work with newer pullers and stuff. And that's sort of the point of all these videos is figuring out a real, uh, like we've said before, curriculum of how to uh, get people to an understanding of arm wrestling really quickly. And one of the things that you'll notice is that as you're teaching somebody a move is like, yeah, okay, you're going to post. So you need to rise like this and they get that and then you start teaching them how to like contain and, and, and roll through it and as soon as they start containing they forget about rise and then as soon you know so by doing these moves like Alex said you start to identify what's wrong with the moves that aren't comfortable to you or why the moves that are comfortable to you are so strong. It just starts to make a lot more sense, right? Um, and this is also, like Alex said, because you, you can do it at so many different intensity levels, uh, it's a good addition to the warm up or like the next thing you can do from a warm up. And since we just released a warm up video, we feel like that's also why this video kind of ties into what's going on right now. So uh, the way we like to do it is, again, as if we were warming up, just taking a good athletic position. Uh, so that means like I'm tense, I'm trying to hold center, I'm trying to make sure that I've got my body where I want it. And then I'm literally just going to move through the kata. So the first one is high hook. So I'll try to hit that. Then I'll post. Then I'll sweep. Then I'll low hand. Then I'll open. And then I'll king's move. And Again, Alex is getting to feel all those different pressures. And the other thing is that we're trying to stay between, say, like 11 and 1, like just right at the very top, right? Mm -hmm. So like Alex said, just initiation. Super safe for me as well. And I get to feel all those different pressures. And you can do the same thing on the inside. All right. So again, like start, start from the top. So high hook. Hook and drive. Hook and drag. Shoulder roll flop yeah and again me being able to feel all those different moves and how they're initiated especially the the better you and your teammates get at it the more proficient they become with the moves the more you can get like understand about those moves you know so like one that i've been missing a lot about the flop is the idea of leading like with your thumb and your pronation and not just kind of letting your whole hand go and i think like for me it was always just Again, because I'm looking at the hill and thinking about just the fundamentals, it's about getting that shoulder in. I don't give a shit about my hand as long as I can get my shoulder in and my wrist closer to my body. So I would, I would try to do like this type thing, and it, and it would never really work. I, I was good at transitioning up to a press, uh, but now realizing that's because I have my pronation intact when I do so. And after doing it with Alex, really feeling that when he flops, he's really like pulling kind of with his thumb first, you know? So it, it gave me this other feeling for how to initiate a flop press uh, that I hadn't really realized before, you know? Because uh, with a real flop, it's hard to feel that unless you're in a real match with somebody. But again, because 
you were proficient with the move and we're training with each other and we're doing it at a level where, where we have respect for each other and we're trying to help each other improve. Uh, you're not trying to smash me with it or anything. I'm able to identify how you're doing it, you know, because you're slowing it down and you're doing it in control. And we can do that 20 times in a row. So you can really dial that in. Yeah. I can practice with different moves, seeing what counters what. Yeah. And really get an idea of how to move against a certain move. Yeah. So again, the point here uh, is learn the kata, learn how to do it on your own so that you can then do it with your opponents. And the way you address learning these moves is just like, again, looking at them where they are in the hill, understanding what fundamentals are involved, and then uh, sort of, you know, building them from there. And then you take it to working with somebody. How does that feel? What does that feel like? So like low hand top roll is another one that uh, for me forever, I was so focused on just dragging this way that I would let my riser dump so hard that I'm ending up in this, in this really shitty low hand, uh, top roll position where in reality I need to be like this and I need to keep that riser still attacking up. Even though I am leading with the low part of my hand, I don't, it doesn't mean that I'm forgetting about all of this and it's not until we slow it down and do it at this controlled level that either Alex or myself are able to identify like, oh, that's what the fuck's happening. Okay, we'll stop doing that stupid shit. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, that's really a fucking good move now because yep. the fundamental strength is there. I'm just, mind muscle connection isn't connecting it the right way, right? And that's what this cod is about. It's again, like when we first introduced it, talking about the guy who's sitting in the corner, you know, throwing his punches and his knees like really methodically. When he gets in the ring and all of a sudden he has to throw a punch, it's just gonna like, it's gonna happen perfectly really fast and that's what we're trying to establish here so yeah really all this is is just drilling practicing the movements which like i said in the warm-up video arm wrestling is a sport we are athletes so train like athletes athletes drill athletes spar practice practice certain techniques over and over again until they have it dialed in they don't just go boss the wall all the time right yeah because there's something about learning to be in control that once you have to go like once you have to lose control that you become that much more effective, you know? Yeah. I think like, um, like yeah, that's, that's I think the most important part is really learning how to do all these movements and like Alex said, treating it like an athlete so you're drilling and you're trying to get this stuff pounded into your head so that when it becomes fight or flight and like you go, I don't even remember like that match. I don't remember what happened. You, you did it so correctly because it was so ingrained and that's like, again, that can go right back to lifting. You know, when we talk about powerlifting and everything, which is where we both, like come from in the strength world, like all my best lifts, I, ha I have no physical memory of that lift. I have a video I can watch and I have a feeling of that day, but I don't remember the moment. I, I Maybe I remember unracking it and that's about it because after that, you're so fight or flight, like you've got life on your back right now and it's either going to crush you or it's not, that you go to a different place and all you have to rely on at that point is the fact that you've done good formulaic and proper technique in your training over and over and over again that you yeah your body is just gonna execute for you yeah so that's the video if you like the video please like the video leave comments subscribe smash the bell all of those things and monkeys out peace